Hey guys, my name is Karthik and I am from EziraAutomation.com and welcome to a mini series from Ezra Automation on Postman. And in this series, we will talk about some of the advanced concept of Postman, not like the basic get, post, put that you could able to do in the Postman and also see the results as a JSON body or how that you can intercept those JSON body and see the status code. That's not the whole idea about this course. So this series is mostly towards some of the advanced concepts that we mostly end up using in our organization while it comes to testing the APIs which are running in the microservices. So let's see how these things can be done in the Postman. In order to work with the Postman for this particular series, we are going to be using one of the applications that I have already developed called as the GraphQL.NET application that you are seeing over here. So this is one of the application which is already there at the public repo in our Excel Automation repository. You can just go over there and you can just clone it and then you can start using it. It is built using .NET and it has the endpoints for both GraphQL as well as for REST APIs. And we are going to be using the REST API to see how we could be able to test them. So I already have a terminal over here and then I'm going to show you how we could be able to clone all these things and start using it. So I'm going to go over here and then I'm going to type any directory and then I'm going to do a git clone. And the cloning I'm going to be doing is for this particular repository that you are seeing over here, the GraphQL.NET repository. So let me clone that. I'm going to copy it and then I'm going to paste it and boom, it is going to clone the repository for us. And now if you just go to the GraphQL.NET directory and if you see it has all the code that you are seeing in the directory as well over here on the GraphQL repository. So it's all good. So basically, in order to run this particular application, you need to have .NET installed in your machine. And since this particular project is developed using .NET 6, which is a cross-platform .NET, you could be able to run this in Mac, Windows, and Linux operating system. And as you can see, I'm running Mac operating system, and I could be able to happily run this application as well. All I'm going to do is I'm going to just do a .NET of run, and which means it is going to run the whole application for me after building the application. So you can see that it is first building the application. And once the build is done, it is then going to start running the application for me on the port number localhost 5001. So if I click this link, you will see that it is going to go over here quite blank at the moment. Reason being, you need to go to what is called as a swagger slash index.html. Make sure that you go to this particular link because that's where the swagger documentation is sitting, where we can see the APIs that you can actually call and work with. So you can see that this is the Swagger documentation and you can see this is going to show you some of the authenticate endpoints, components endpoints and the product endpoints. So basically these are the endpoints that we are going to be automating using the Postman. So I'm going to go do an authorize and you can see that it requires me to have a bearer token. So where do I get this bearer token? You're going to go to this first one and over here hit a try out and try the username as uh, KK and password as 123456 and hit execute which is going to bring you up this particular token so just copy this particular token and go to the authenticate once again and go type bearer paste it the token that you copied and hit authorize and now if you go any one of the controllers or the endpoints you could able to just hit the tryout and hit the id and if you hit execute, it is going to bring you up the detail of the particular product. So without the authentication, you couldn't be able to really do any of the operation. Again, if I just go to the authorize, hit logout. And now if you go to the product over here, if I try executing it, you will see that it's going to be showing you an unauthorized error. So that's about the application itself. We can just play around with other endpoints, which we'll be doing probably in our upcoming videos of this particular mini series. But you could actually do whatever that you wanted to do in this particular endpoint. So this is the Swagger documentation. And the same thing you could do as well using the GraphQL endpoint which I was talking about. So you can just go to the localhost 5001, but instead of the Swagger, you can just type the 5001 UI slash playground, which is gonna bring you up this particular playground. And then if you hit run, you will see that, oh, there we go. So that's not the, the right way of doing it. Probably gonna remove this description hit run here we go so you can see that it is just coming up for me and i think i could able to get the components as well which has got the name and the description hit run you can see that it brings me up the description names and stuff so yeah so this is basically an application which has both the rest api as well as the graphql cool so now that's all about the application itself and let's start working with the postman and we'll see how we could able to perform this operation that i just showed you using the postman and as you can see while i was just running this particular endpoint i actually require you to have an authentication without authentication i couldn't really 
perform any of the operation like get product by id so in order to work with the get product by id i really need to have what is called as a token without token i couldn't be able to do any of these operation so how do i achieve this particular operation in the postman that's what is our first video that we are going to be talking about so the first thing as i told you to work with the postman you need to download this postman itself which is completely free you can download it and you can sign in if you really wanted to i have not signed in and i'm going to go and i'm going to create a collection i'm going to call this collection as a graphql app and this collection is going to hold all the requests that i'm going to create so basically i'm going to add a request right clicking it and then i'm going to say post authentication so this is how you create a request like that and then because it's going to be a post operation you're going to choose the post and then you can type the whole url something like this and i mean you know what it is right so if you try typing the name once again as try out just to kk one two three four five six hit execute you will see that it's going to bring you up this token so this is the url so you can just copy this particular whole url go to the postman paste it over here and because it requires you to pass a body i'm going to choose a body as well and i'm going to choose the raw and i'm going to choose the json as the type and again because it's an advanced mini series i'm not going to go detail about how you are going to pass or create a body something like that so i'm going to choose that i'm going to copy the whole body that i have passed in for the authentication and now if i hit run you will see that the token is coming up which is great so this is how you achieve that in the postman as well pretty much like how we did in the swagger but in order to hold this particular url which is hard coded here and the path we could able to set all these things in what is called as an environments which is here so i'm going to create a new environment i'm going to call this as graphql environment and this graphql environment is going to hold different environment values for us for example the base url so this base url is going to hold what is called as this url that you are seeing over here and i'm going to paste that initial value that's the base url and then we're going to create an authenticate url so if i want to create an authenticate url you could do that as well just go to the environment and call this as auth url and then over here because the auth url i just copied not the whole value because the this particular value is already there in what is called as a base url we could just do this double braces if you just type that it's going to bring you up what is called as a context of the variable itself so you can get the variable and the base url is the variable that i wanted over here and then i could paste this particular url which is going to be the base url slash api authenticate of login so this is going to be the login url for me quite great right so this is how you could able to do that so let's see how we could able to do this operation as well so i'm going to go over here i'm going to replace this whole thing to what is called as a auth url but in order to do that first of all let's save this whole thing because you see that there is an orange uh, bulb symbol there which means it's not saved and i'm going to come over here and i need to choose this environment so this environment is going to be the graphql environment so once i do that you'll see that it is currently in use which is great uh and now i can just type braces braces and you see that i can get the base url and auth url from here i'm going to choose the auth url that's it that's it and now if i hit send you see that it is working fine basically we have shortened the url as well which is great and i'm going to use the same operation but i'm going to get the token value and that's the whole idea about this particular video right like how we could able to get this token value out from this particular response that we are getting in well that's the reason we have what is called as a tests over here over here i can just use something called a spm which is nothing but a variable for the postman as you can see and on the postman pm i can do something like the environment dot there is something called as a set where i can set the value what is called as a token value into that particular environment so i'm going to call this as token something like this and i can set the value but where is this 
value going to come from? Well, the value is going to come from the response that we are getting in. So I can just do pm dot response dot to JSON. So there is a method called as to JSON where I'm going to convert this whole response as to JSON and then I'm going to get the value what is called as token. So once I get this token over here, it is going to get the response for me like token value, which is this one. And then it's going to set that value to the token environment. So basically this is how you can able to create an environment directly into the environments over here. So now I'm going to do a send. And if you go to the environments over here, you will see that the value is currently null. I think what I should do is instead of two JSON, I, there is also a method called as JSON. I think this is what I should be using it. Once I use this JSON method, and then if I send it, hopefully this time, there we go. You can see that the token comes in. So this two JSON comes very handy while you are gonna play around with this JSON value, like a complex structure, and then you're gonna parse that value and then use that value, which we'll be doing later in this course. You can use the two JSON over there. But at the moment, this JSON method is more than enough to perform this operation for us. And using this operation, we could able to perform the rest of the operation, which is the get operation in our application. So if I go to this get product by ID, I can just copy this particular URL, which is the endpoint. And then I'm gonna create one more request here. I'm gonna call this as get product by ID. And I'm gonna use the base URL slash product slash product by ID and I'm going to pass the ID as one so that I could get able to get the particular value. But for the authorization, we really need to pass what is called as a bearer token. So how do I do that bearer token over here? Well, that's the thing. I'm going to create the bearer token over here, but instead of the token, something like this, I could able to just get the particular value by passing bearer and the token is going to be the token. So always use the double curly braces, which is going to be a friend, which is going to get the variable values from the environment. That's it. You can see that the intelligence is much intelligent enough to show us as well. That's cool. And now let me go and try to perform a get operation. And now once I hit send, you will see that it is showing me the unauthorized over here. Well, the reason why it shows unauthorized is because you have chosen the bearer token as the type, you don't necessarily have to pass the bearer over here. You can just uh, use the token variable alone. And then if you do a send, you will see that it is going to get the response back. So this is how we could able to use Postman to actually get the authentication token and store into a variable of the environment of the Postman and then get the rest of the operation. So now you could see that it is actually working fine. In our next video, we'll see how we could able to use this test even further to perform some testing operations from the responses and how we could be able to run these tests within Postman.